Does FBI on the campus kick their ass and tell them to take the list and roll it and shove it? Okay. All right. You know, you know you're not important unless there's FBI on campus that's watching your movements, including your bowel movements. Okay. All right. Now, if you're not satisfied with the paper you boycott, and if you have questions on the electoral process, you form wings to the left or the right of whoever else is in charge of the party. Now, this is more or less the Republican state, uh, I gather. No? No? Gary's making faces. He's saying it's sort of it's one way and the other as well. Okay, so that's good. I trust him because he's political. And so we will assume that uh, it's not absolutely, maybe who, who all are in the PAC? Is that your group, Gary? Okay, no, it's, it's not that many. Okay, or is it Jeff? Jeff? Jeff is involved. All right, what I think you guys should do is to get together and think about how you want to move this campus. Because we sometimes announce that we're on these so-called uh, conservative campuses and we don't do what we can. And when you think about the testicular approach, very little pressure makes a big effect, especially on sippies, because they don't have uh, very much the pressure. So you can, they seem big and strong and muscular, but where it counts, they're kind of missing. So you might be able to do a lot more in, pro in causing problems than you might imagine. Okay, so what I think you ought to do is consider how you want to respond to the uh, problem of to vote or not to vote, and uh, how you want to keep the Jesse Jackson concept alive, because if he got seven million votes, it means that there are very few places where there aren't some people that are prepared to extend his power. And I think that you've got a lot more power than you realize. And I think you can have a lot of fun, because being outside the mainstream is very often where all the fun is. So uh, I suggest that uh, if there's going to be another meeting of the uh, various, was there ever a club involved with Jesse Jackson? Did you all, you had something? Okay, so I suggest that you all get together and maybe have a party or something. At no party? Okay, all right have a party or something, and everybody brings something, and somebody that has the biggest house have everybody over and decide what you want to do about election day to, uh, to decide whether you want to go with Duda Kaka or, uh, or uh, whether you want to. And I can definitely understand going with Duda Kaka because uh, he's, uh, you know, he's maybe the best you've got. And of course, he beats the hell out of, uh, of uh, Danny Quayle and such, such like. Okay, now, so that's, that's, you've got your boycott potential and you've got your, we're losing Reed. Where are you going, sweetheart? What, doll? Okay, little baby. Thanks for coming, sweetheart. He had trouble with his leg, and he's just out of the hospital. He came to hear me. I love him, even if he's a Republican. He's one of the good ones. If he wants you to vote for him, y'all vote for him if he runs again. You're out, honey? Okay, sweetheart, but trust him. He's one of your own. You know, he's a, probably a rotten guy, but he's yours, at least. We love him. Okay. Okay. Let's all say goodbye, Reed. Bye, Reed. Get well. Okay. All right. Now, um, let's see what else. Uh, we want to talk about uh, the tuition. We want to talk about tuition. I gather that your tuition is being threatened, that they're talking about raising your tuition. And there are, there are also tremendous building budgets on this campus. Now, how many people think that it might be a bad idea to urge your uh, administration to suspend billing and declare a moratorium on construction until your tuition has been stabilized to five years ago? How, was the tuition lower or higher five years ago? All right, how much lower would you think it was approximately? Five. 
What's that, about 10%? Going back to the 19th year, when the fall was in the year before, 20% year before that, it's over around 90%. All right, so you think that it might have been half what it is now? How would you like to take the position that there should be no more construction on this campus until your uh, tuition was rolled back to five years ago and that that should be a commitment for the next five years? How many people think that would be conceivable? All right, now how many people think it would be conceivable to take the position that their, the pretended outreach should be translated into action by um, declaring a moratorium on out-of-state uh, tuition costs where the people are of the so-called outreach target, like black people or gays and lesbians or whoever they're going after, Native Americans. I understand that your Native American population is quite low, right? Is that correct? And I would guess, as I have on every campus I've ever gone to, that this campus is sitting on land that was the subject of a Native American treaty at some point. How many of you suspect that possibly if we could find, anybody, I gather here at least you have some, uh, some, uh, sub, some subjects and uh, classes that relate with the Native American history, right? Do you think that there is sufficient uh, access to treaty information that you can find out whether or not this campus is sitting on treaty land? Because if it is, that would be good enough reason to give uh, suspensions of, uh, of uh, tuition to everybody from the Native American community. Somebody has to come roll me forward because my feet fell off my thing. I got pushed back. I pushed myself back. Come on, Gary, push my seat forward, sweetheart. Will you, darling? Okay. Yeah, thank you. Okay. <laughs> This is what happens when you get people off their deathbeds. They can't sit like everybody else. Okay, all right. Now, here's the thing. On the tuition issue, I think that the construction contingent within the Iowa State Board of Education is very much gratified by construction. And many of the people, the same people who think that we don't need any more tuition moratoria are the people that will benefit from the, from the construction. And I don't want to hear about the jobs because I think that the sons and daughters of the, tui of the construction people are the people that are most in need of tuition stability. And I don't understand the inflation of the tuition fees and I don't know why you should. And I think if we've got an inflation of construction and an inflation of tuition uh, uh, fees that uh, one or the other should be considered a result of, of uh, a wrong failed policy. And I think that somebody needs to require that the tuition fees be related to the construction. I'm assuming that you'd like to have additional buildings and toilets and flush. Incidentally, though, you may have uh, Republican uh, uh, construction people, because I went in the John and the door doesn't close. How Was that an extraordinary thing? How many of the John doors don't exactly close? <laughs> Has anybody seen any signs of second-rate construction around here? Because as in the case of Pentagon construction and, and building, there's often flawed uh, technology. So I urge you to take part in the question, raising the question, I think Claire, in reporting my remarks, will have to raise the issue, and you all do what you think is appropriate. But I would suggest that you uh, form a committee of consultant students from the Journalism and Communications Department and from other relevant groups as to whether or not the uh, newspaper in the town is addressing the issues of the campus. How many people might like to be on a consulting committee to evaluate the Tribune and to determine, good, Jeff would be on it. Jeff, you uh, organize, if you can, or help to organize, a committee of students to when they say that it's a rotten paper, you get them to, to qualify and quantify that so that we can find out whether or not in 30 days or more 
round about Thanksgiving time, you guys would decide that there should be no more shopping at uh, New York, or rather uh, Tribune, uh, I was going to say New York Times, advertisers, especially J.C. Penney. We'll just eeny, meeny, miny, mow them the way they eeny, meeny, miny, mow Tawana Brawley. You just pick out the biggest thing you can find and make that a target and the most atrocious. And J.C. Penney probably has good bargains, but most of you have more pantyhose and boots and shoes and, and dresses and pants than you really would need. In some countries, you would re be regarded as obscenely wasteful for having what you have, and you would be regarded as evidence of of Thorstein Veblen's uh, theory of the leisure class and the theory is that the leisure class as well as uh, conspicuous consumption and pecuniary waste. And you may think that you don't have very much and you're a poor little student with almost no money. You write to your parents and say, everybody's getting faded jeans and I don't have any and for Christmas. If you decide you want to send me something, please send me a jeans jacket and some faded jean pants. But that's also a form of pecuniary waste because Keeping up with the styles is a way they make you uh, do this conspicuous consuming. And so um, you could question all that. And also, as you question your vote uh, power, you can question the way you should be using your dollar power and decide whether or not you should continue. And I think one of the best evidences of dollar power is your tuition. And I gather that one of the reasons there's this outreach to the out-of-state students is because on information and belief, uh, they charge, they get $103 for each, what is it, $103, 103% of, uh, out of tuition from out-of-state students goes into the coffers of this university. Is that the right way to put it? Right. Okay. And so, you know, knowing the buck and the whorehouse mentality of our world, we can assume that might have a little something to do with it. Because some of you are subsidized, and they not only pay their full tuition, but 3% more. So we can assume it's not entirely eleemosynary that they want this outreach to out-of-state students. And I think that your best way to sober them up on all these little arbitrary tuition deals is to remind them that you can screw up their uh, construction scene. Not that I expect any of you have the guts to go over and pick it, but at least you can offer that as a possibility. And also, if you have people on campus who are underpaid, like cafeteria workers in most schools are underpaid, and many other workers are underpaid, and also there's not, uh, wherever student labor is involved, some unions say that they are undercutting the uh, union standard. So there are lots of reasons to be unhappy on these campuses. And you guys, by being so well behaved, and women particularly, because you're often the, the uh, object of their discrimination. How many faculty members are women? I dare say half, no? You usually have a lot of faculty women that are uh, faculty people that are women. How many faculty people are black? How many faculty people are 13 out of 2,000? Give unto me a break. Say it ain't so. All right, so there's where you get your sense of humor going. You just you figure a way to move in on the testicular pressure until they get some black. They're outreaching for out-of-state students. Tell them to outreach for some. They always say they have a hard time finding black faculty, but they find them like they find any other people. In a prostitute society, you offer them money, and they'll usually come, excuse the expression. OK, so we want to see some black faculty out here. See, you, you are collaborators with their policies so long as you're quiet and don't raise any issues. And I'm perfectly prepared to take full credit or blame for having aroused you. See, the thing about people like Al Sharpton and Mason and Madison and me is that we're like alarm clocks. And the people who dislike alarm clocks most are the people that are awakened. And so we can afford to feel sorry for, for Tawana Brawley, but we don't feel uh, Gr uh, gracious to the uh, to the uh, people that wake us up to the case. 
because we have funny hairdos and I can't walk or stand up. So in other words, we have good reason not to follow people that wake us up to the realities of sexism and racism, but it's live and well on this campus, obviously. And I suppose as any whore should be, I should be grateful to the John, but uh, it just depends on whether they're spreading AIDS or something equally virulent. And I think the day of the student collaboration with the campus penury is, is getting past uh, time to be ended. I just think we've had enough of that. And the sentence was ungrammatical, but you know what I mean. Um, I think that we women need to uh, stop laughing a little bit. I think we may have laughed a little too much, but even if we have to laugh as we do it, I think we need to do it. And I think that in a campus of where your faculty is 2,000 plus and your black faculty is under 2% or even under 1%, I think that somebody needs to move because you see, we keep saying how bad things are and silence is collaborative. You're either part of the problem or part of the solution, as Malcolm X very aptly said. And I really think that the, every time we mention how bad the school is, we're commenting on our apathy on which we are sitting. And I think that we have to stop, you know, getting the benefit of all the corruption and then complaining about it, whether it's the vote power, the dollar power, the body power that we need to use to make changes. See, your child would have been shitting in her clothes from now till 21, age 21, if you hadn't stopped her. You have to break people of doing the wrong things even when you love them a lot. And uh, you have to understand that these campuses, which you love so much and I hope you continue to, have to be made to do some of the right things. And I think the whole society will be made safer. So much of the health of the society of the state depends on the major campuses. And I think they're putting out a whole bunch of people who without even realizing go out and support these policies if only by their silence. And you've got teachers throughout this state and throughout the country who have accepted this kind of, uh, of uh, sexism and racism if you just judge it by the numbers of of uh, people you have on the payroll and the numbers of people that you have paying tuition. And I certainly think you should not accept any more raises. Very often we'll take the oppression we've always uh, been uh, taking, but uh, we have in our concept uh, within the group I have called VACPAC, a concept of, of BOHICA, and that stands for bend over, here it comes again. And uh, you, don't, you don't mind the screwing you've already had, and you'll take that indefinitely. But you might decide that you're a little bit tired of an additional screw. So when they talk about raising tuition, that could be what knocks the chip off your shoulder. Because I don't know how many people really want to have the tuition raised, especially when so much of the money is going to the same people that arrange for the continuation of the Tribune and the money class here in Iowa because Republican or Democrat, nobody seems to be uh, speaking out. And I think it might be a very good idea to have your Democrats for Dukakis or whatever it is to make some commitments about whether or not you uh, want him to take a position on the end of SDI until student uh, uh, fees have been stabilized, the ending of construction on campuses until students' fees have been stabilized. In other words, I think there should be linkage between student fee stabilization and the idea that he wants all people who can afford it to go to school. Because even if you can afford it, you don't want to be ripped off. In other words, the fact that your family have 15 cents doesn't mean that you should be cheated when you go to the J.C. Penney store. You want your change. And I think that the campuses of this country have too easily been able to slip it to us once again by reducing the services, which they may not have done here. But if they raise the tuition, it is in effect a reduction of services. And albeit your services may be ideally perfect. And I don't know what buildings, what are some of the buildings that they're putting up? What is it? What is it again? 
Oh, computation. That's computers. Right, and that's a way to throw more people out of work. Or make more people work less? Well, well, it's in any case, I think that we need to understand that computerization is, uh, is, is overdone in our society. And I don't think the technocracy is working in the, for the benefit of most people. And I think that the world can live without a computer building on this campus. And I think it certainly should not be at the expense of a raised tuition. So I think all those people that believe that the tuition should be stabilized with a treaty, which they'll observe like they do the Indian treaties, um, that your tuition will not only not be raised, but, the, but will be rolled back to five years ago. And you will sacrifice the joy of a computer building of X millions of dollars. What is the tuition, uh, uh, annual tuition budget? Anybody know? All right, get somebody working on this kind of stuff, because this general feeling that it's not fair is good, but uh, the good people like figures. So why doesn't somebody get some good figures? And why well, I think the testicular area is extremely tender now that Dukakis has got another month to campaign. And I think if all students led by the Iowa State University students would demand that uh, no votes go off the campuses to the Democrat Party unless there's some commitment to a stabilization of student fees and a, a hold in the moratorium on all buildings, especially those related to computerization. Uh, that could be a very big leadership position, and I think Iowa State would be in a big leadership role. And all you have to do is to put that in your little campus paper and send it around to the New York Times and all the rest of these creepo papers. And you might discover that you're on the map in a way that you never thought you would be, and maybe you wouldn't even want to be. Matter of fact, if you give me a copy, what is this half inch cassette you're doing? You're doing a three quarter? All right, if you give me a copy of that, I'll take it to New York and I'll put it, I have a cable television program called The Flo Kennedy Show. I've had it for 15 years. If you, can you make me a, a, if you can't, make me a half inch cassette, give me the three quarter inch and we'll send it to Manhattan Cable TV and it'll go all over New York and maybe start a little fuss there. And then we will uh, get a half inch cassette and you guys could possibly, uh, I don't think you could sell it, but uh, you might send it around. How many people might, uh, how many people here are in the journalism or communication school department? All right, you might decide whether or not you wanna urge the students. You don't have to uh, use my words or anything, but you could suggest that uh, you get a moratorium on all the campuses on this vote power, dollar power, and, um, and body power. How long is this speech supposed to have been? It's probably over time. What time is it? It's 20 after 9. 20 after 9, and I started at 8 o'clock? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, I'm way over time. There's going to be a reception after this, and I'll just say a last couple of words, and then you guys can be free because people have babysitters and homework and shit. So I will simply say that you've got three kinds of power, dollar power, vote power, and body power and uh, you can use them as you wish. If anybody tells you that you're not ready, just say ready or not, here we come. Thank you. Okay, hold it for an announcement of the reception.